gadgets. Hello everybody and welcome to today's review of The Batman. It is the new film directed by Matt Reeves starring Robert Pattinson as Batman. Now this is a completely new franchise. This film has nothing to do with any of the other films that we have seen featuring Batman so far as we know. Now at the beginning of this film he has already been Batman for two years. Ever since he started his crusade crime has actually gone up and things seem to be getting worse. Eventually a masked man known as the Riddler starts to kill some of Gotham's most elite citizens leaving behind a lot of clues and riddles specifically for Batman to follow and it's up to him to stop the Riddler and to try to find out what his true intentions are. Now let's get to the crux of the matter. First of all is Robert Pattinson a good Batman? As a matter of fact, I would say that he is probably my favorite Batman. And that's saying something because in the past we have seen a lot of interpretations of the Batman. All of these actors, from Adam West to Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, no, not George Clooney, but Christian Bale, even Ben Affleck, had something to contribute to the character. But in the case of Robert Pattinson, this is a much more subtle performance, and I actually liked that. The whole thing with Batman is that he wants the very idea of his presence to be fear-inducing. The way Robert walks and talks like Batman, and the way he also uses his detective skills, is just on a scale that we have never seen before in any Batman film. Also, Paul Dano as the Riddler. Now this was a very interesting interpretation of the Riddler. I actually like the fact that they made the Riddler more menacing in this film than we have ever seen him before. I mean the guy is killing people. And one of the reasons why the Riddler has always been one of my favorite Batman villains of all time is simply because he uses his brain to outwit Batman. And that is a very interesting contrast considering that Batman is a very physical character. And Paul Dano did a great job in portraying this character. However, I would say this performance was very reminiscent to what we have seen him do before. His mannerisms and the way he talked reminded me of some of his other films like Little Miss Sunshine, There Will Be Blood. The way that he usually presents himself is very fitting for this character but the biggest scene stealer in this movie hands down is Colin Farrell as the penguin. I mean you can't even tell that this is Colin Farrell not just with the makeup but with his performance and it looks like he had a lot of fun playing the character. I certainly had a lot of fun watching him play that character and he doesn't have a lot of scenes in the movie and that's a shame because I really wanted to see more of him. Luckily HBO Max has already greenlit a penguin show so I'm really looking forward to that. But the one thing that I really want to emphasize about this movie is that it got Gotham right. One of my biggest beefs with Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy was the fact that he made Gotham look too clean. But I think Matt Reeves outdid him by a mile, by 500 miles. This Gotham is dark, dirty, grimy, wet from the rain, and just crumbling from the lack of morality in the city. I mean, just looking at it gives you a sense of hopelessness. This is definitely one of the darkest interpretations of Batman, and the production design of this film really helped set the mood. Unfortunately, I cannot say that this was a perfect Batman film. There are a few issues I had with this film. My number one issue is Catwoman. Now don't get me wrong, I think that Zoe Kravitz is a good actress and she did a decent job in this film, but as Selina Kyle, Catwoman's alter ego. Selina Kyle in this movie is a girl who falls on hard times and works at a nightclub that is populated by mobsters. She gets in deep with the wrong sort of people and even has a score to settle with the biggest mobster of all. That sort of thing I really liked. But the one thing that you gotta remember about Catwoman is that she and Batman have always had this very interesting love-hate relationship. And this film didn't really do that for me. When it comes to them working together, there is chemistry there. I mean, I could see that there was a romance sparking between the two of them, but it felt forced, to be honest with you. And also, I didn't really like the suit. Her mask is basically just a ski mask with holes cut out. I mean, I get it. It might suit her character. No pun intended. She's a girl who's fallen on hard times, so she cannot really afford a high-tech suit. I don't know. I really thought they could have been more creative there. Second of all, I wanted to see more Bruce Wayne. And what I mean by that is Batman has always had this difficulty with duality. He is trying to live two lives. However, in this movie, whenever he's Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne is acting very similar to Batman. He's just a little bit more closed off and more mopey. I'm actually surprised nobody caught on to the fact that he was Batman. And one could argue, yeah, that's probably how a character would act after they've seen their parents shot in an alley when they were 10 years old. I get that. 
However, I kind of miss the whole struggle with him trying to live two lives while also knowing that he has a greater responsibility to the city. And the last thing I'll say about this film is, yes, it is long. It's a three hour film and it definitely feels like it. However, I'll tell you this, when I was in the theater watching this movie, I didn't hear a single peep from the audience. And there was like over a hundred people in that auditorium. That's because this film forces you to pay attention because it acts like a detective story. You have to focus on every little detail detail in order for everything to make sense. Now, would I say that this is the best Batman film we've ever gotten? No. In fact, I still think we haven't seen the best Batman film. Now, granted, the Dark Knight trilogy does have a lot of rewatchability, and it probably has a slight edge over this movie in terms of entertainment value. However, those films felt like expensive crime thrillers, whereas this film felt like a Batman film. And I'll say this, the Batman is probably the best written Batman. Everything about this script just works. And like a detective story, everything seems to connect well with each other. And above all, it remains true to the spirit of the original characters from the DC comics. So I'm going to give this Batman an A minus. Thank you for watching my video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope to see you again next time.